ladies and gentlemen hey hi how you doing welcome back to the channel thank you so much for stopping by one question i'm always seeing in the comments is zach what are your in-game settings zach how do you get your game to look like that with the colors and with your brightness and everything what are you using for your controller settings what are you doing for your movement settings y'all are very interested in what i got going on in my setup right so today we're going over all of my settings here in warzone what i use for my controller settings my keyboard and mouse settings uh, my visual settings what i do for color to make my game look better all sorts of stuff like that you'll find it right here in this video as we go through it all if you enjoy it at any point or if you find it helpful let me know by dropping a like on it and of course if you're new to the channel or if you haven't already subscribed i am always covering everything going on in cod news intel updates it's all right here so feel free to subscribe that way you can always stay up to date Okay, so as we go into settings here, we'll start first on keyboard and mouse. Honestly, I'm not a very uh, predominant keyboard and mouse player. Usually if I'm playing Battle Royale and I'm trying to win, I wanna make sure my squad can count on me. I'm going for a controller because that's where I'm the most comfortable, but I do play on both inputs. I switch back and forth, obviously. In a lot of like the loadout videos, you guys see me playing plunder with keyboard and mouse where I'm trying to get better. That's where I'm trying to, you know, work on flicks, work on centering, you know, tracking heads. That's pretty much where I, uh, I'm practicing all the time. But uh, if you're interested in what I do on keyboard and mouse, I play on an 800 DPI. I've got a 5.9 sensitivity. Uh, aim down sight is relative. Uh, low zoom is 0.77, high zoom is 0.9. This is a lot of preference-based stuff. What works for me might not work for you. It's a lot of trial and error, testing this sense, is that gonna work? Trying this sense, is that gonna work? Uh, so on and so forth. And honestly, the same kind of goes for key binds and whatnot. Uh, when I go through and I do all my stuff, obviously movement's pretty basic. I like to use uh, certain keys for, you know, crouching or sliding, uh, different things for plating and whatnot. So again, that's more so preference-based, but sensitivity is really the main one that I get asked a lot about here. 800 DPI, 5.9 in-game sense. Now, of course, I'm on PC. I, I play on a dedicated gaming PC. I have a two PC set up for, you know, recording and making everything as efficient as possible for me. Most players are probably not going to have that same situation. So a lot of the uh, general settings and graphic settings here that we're going to get into are, are going to be very specific to what kind of build you have. And of course, if you're on console, you're not always going to even have the vast majority of these settings. There will be some shared ones like with controller and some other uh, movement based ones. But for this portion, it's predominantly meant for PC players. Uh, input device, again, that's all on you, whatever you want to play. Like I said, I'm the most comfortable on controller. Feel the view I've messed around with a lot. Hopefully one day this is going to come to console and it'll really even out the playing field because as you can see in the preview here on the right, despite the face cam sort of being here, ADFOV is where console players are by default. You see what's inside of that little box there, 120 sees everything. So I do play on max FOV. I play on 120. I absolutely love it. Just it makes the game look so much better. It makes the game, uh, I feel like way more fun to play too. You're not lo constantly looking down like this narrow little line of sights. And then in addition to having the 120 FOV, I also play on affected field of view, which basically uh, eliminates some visual recoil that you'll have on certain weapons. In my opinion, it makes it easier to stay on target. It doesn't change the physical recoil pattern on any weapon, but visually it does make it easier to see what's going on while you're shooting. So between FOV and the ADS field of view, uh, PC definitely has like a big up there over consoles. Like I said, hopefully one day console is going to have these options because it's a game changer for sure. Uh, I would highly recommend if you play on PC to try this out because for me, I switched to both of these and I felt like I was playing at a much higher level. Brightness, 52, that's really all dependent on what's going on with you. And then as far as like the accessibility stuff, that stuff really doesn't matter too much. You're gonna change that whether you need the colorblind assistance or not. Uh, Minimap, you always go for square. Anytime I see circle minimaps and like clips on Twitter, I'm like, come on, man, what are you doing with the circle minimap out here? Square gives you a, uh, a wider radius that you can see across. So you just want that uh, that bigger minimap in the corner there. It's going to help out for uh, information all around. Uh, minimap rotation I have enabled. I figure it's easier to call out when that is rotating. So that makes it a bit easier for me. Mostly everything rounding out the general tab is preference based. Again, if you're on console, you won't even have half this, but on PC, I like to see my FPS counter. Uh, I like to see my latency, especially because pretty much everyone I play with, uh, Espresso, Lazy, Butters, uh, Courier, Ink Slasher, all of my hosts are East Coast, and then I'm in uh, I'm in mountains, so I'm always playing on a high ping. I like to at least see if I'm gonna be just destroyed by having 110 ping most games. And then packet loss is also useful too, just to see if like the server's lagging or I'm having connection issues. So I like to have those on my screen at all times. 
that doesn't really make any difference in gameplay though. Now, graphic settings as a PC player is one that I get asked about all the time. Like I said earlier, I'm playing on a dedicated gaming PC. So when I'm gaming, I have nothing else open in the background, maybe Spotify sometimes, but I can also just have that on the other PC instead. So it's strictly focused on the game. It's like if my PC was just a console dedicated to gaming and gaming alone. So uh, that's what I got going on here. So my settings might be a bit higher compared to if you had a single PC, maybe it was lower end, you have a different graphics card, a different, uh, you know, CPU. It's all very dependent on what your situation is. So copying my settings here one for one might not be the best go at it, but uh, you can definitely sort of try and base certain things off of what I use here and there. My monitor, I use a 240 hertz Asus monitor. It uh, feels really, really good. I've got a 3090 in my current gaming PC, so I'm on that 240 screen refresh rate. Uh, render res, I play at 100. I know some players like TP, he plays at 200 render res. I think he's got a similar PC set up to what I've got going on. So if you have a PC capable of just cranking out frames left and right, you can try and bump that render res up to 200 and the game is going to look a bit better in areas where like there's a lot of trees or you know there's a lot of textures going on um i noticed like on various hills tp's game looks really really clear whereas if i'm playing on my regular 100 render res it doesn't necessarily seem as crisp so that's something to look into if your pc can handle it but most of the time uh, I, i'll take the frames over the visual clarity in most fights so i stick to just basic 100 there uh, i don't play with vsync that's all uh, like custom stuff here uh reflex low latency this is again pc dependent on whether or not you really want to capitalize off this i play with enabled to make it feel a bit smoother in some situations some players like enabled plus boost others don't really play with it at all uh that's not one that i feel like is a super important uh setting though most of the time if uh, if you're on pc you know whether or not to use this um and it's like a simple google search there if your gpu or your cpu is worth using this on so i wouldn't pay too much attention to that one when we get into details and textures and all this stuff, this is really the important stuff here. So personally, streaming quality is on normal for me. Texture res is on high, obviously. Uh, this won't make the biggest difference in whether or not you're seeing people clearly or whatnot, but I feel like having the environment look smooth is, uh, you know, going to be better overall, and obviously it looks better for you guys in the videos. Some things I do sacrifice just so the quality in the videos stays better rather than having, uh, you know, more frames or, or, or certain other advantages in game because I like the videos to look nice as well. Uh, the texture filter is going to be on normal. This, I feel like, looks fine in game. You can turn it to high, but it's really not going to make that much of a difference. Particle quality I have on high just because it's sometimes nice to be able to see those things in the distance. If you had it on low, maybe it's not as clear. It doesn't stand out as much. Uh, bullet impacts and sprays I like to have on. I feel like it's somewhat useful to see uh, where that stuff is happening on the map. Tessellation I have disabled. It really doesn't make that much of a difference in game, in my opinion, visually. On-demand texture streaming. I'm going to be honest. I don't even know what this does. I have it turned on. I have it set to 9 and 16. I have no idea what that does for my game, but hey. I have it on, I don't notice any drawbacks for it, so I keep it on. For shadows and lighting, the shadow map resolutions on normal, you don't really have to have super high quality shadows. As long as you can see them, I think you're pretty much good. For whatever reason, my game likes to reset my uh, my spot shadows and my sun shadows caches. I like to have these enabled, uh, but for whatever reason, every time I boot up the game, they're disabled. So if I remember to turn them on, I keep them on because I feel like it runs smoother with those. Uh, particle lighting I have on high for the same reasons with the particle resolution as before. Uh, ray tracing, definitely do not have on. Maybe if I'm playing the campaign, I want it on so the game will look better. But for a competitive sense, you don't want ray tracing on. Yeah, the game will look pretty, but your frames are just going to go into the garbage, into the toilet and uh, it's not going to be ideal for playing at a competitive level. So ray tracing is definitely off. Ambient occlusion I have is both. Makes things look a little bit more crisp and stand out a little bit better. Uh, screen space reflection I have on high. And then getting into like the post-processing effects. Filmic strength I have on 0.80. This is one that I've gone back and forth with. I turned it all the way down to zero to see if it would make things clearer. And it actually just made it look like my iron sights weren't as clear. So I bumped it back up and uh, things seem to be just fine when I ADS. This is a setting you might want to mess around with for yourself, though, just to see what is going to work the best and what's going to look the best on your computer and on your monitor or TV. Uh, DLSS I have disabled because, as we know, it affects um, your reticles and your aim and whatnot. It doesn't align them properly, so definitely don't have that on. And honestly, I play on 1080p, so having this turned on doesn't really do anything for me. If you're playing at 4K or 1440p, though, you might want to turn it on once it is fixed. Raven has said they're working to fix it. It'll probably happen in Season 4, but for now... Do not run with DLSS, it's going to screw up your aim. Uh, Anti-aliasing, I have on 1x. Depth of field, I definitely have disabled. It just makes things totally clear when I'm ADSing. There's no blur or anything. World motion blur, absolutely disable it. Same deal with weapon motion blur. You want the clearest game possible at all times. It's going to make spotting enemies easier. It's going to make seeing everything easier. Motion blur, great for cinematic effects, don't get me wrong. But again, for a competitive sense, same deal as ray tracing. It's not going to help you out here. 
then film grain i have a zero for all the same clarity reasons and then dynamic resolution disable and uh in turn the target frame rate does not matter either uh this is going to make it so that your render res and your game will look different depending on what frames you're trying to hit which to me uh is not ideal especially once again for a competitive sense now for audio, I've messed around with a lot of the various presets. I've used home theater, I've used dynamic home theater, I've used studio reference, I've used all sorts of these. What I'm currently using is boost high. Now, again, this is something that's gonna depend a lot on what you're using for your setup. Different headsets are gonna have different sounds, different mix amps will do different things for you. So this is one you're gonna have to go in, you're gonna have to test for yourself, change the different presets, uh, see what you can hear footsteps with the best, see what you can hear, uh, you know, just general audio, what you're looking for uh, in terms of audio information, what preset is gonna make that stand out the most, whether that's gunshots, footsteps, whatever it may be. Uh, I use DT990 Pros for my headset, and I also use a Go XLR for my mixer for that as my preamp for that. So Boost High, I found to work really, really well. Uh, but again, that's gonna be something you're gonna have to test on your own. Whereas the actual volume mixers here, not so much. Now, the actual volume itself, again, you can have it cranked, you can have it lower. I can change all of it outside the game, so I leave it as is in game. But the master, obviously, you want high, you have to have game audio. Music, I pretty much turn off. Music gives me no sort of uh, important information in game. In fact, it blocks the important information in game. It's playing over footsteps, it's playing over VO. So I don't want music on in game. I want to be able to hear all the important things, which of course is the dialogue and the effects. Dialogue will let you know when enemies are dropping in above your area, that VO will play, uh, obviously warning you about various uh, events in game and whatnot. So dialogue is important to have relatively high so you can hear those things even when you're shooting, even when you're locked in and focused. Then effects is obviously very important. That's gunfire. That's all sorts of important in-game information that you want to hear. So uh, the volumes here, just make sure you have dialogue and effects higher than whatever else, but you don't have to have it on 34 and 25 like I do. That's just what's not too loud or not too quiet for me, you know? Now getting into the controller settings, I get asked about these all the time. Uh, we can also cover movement in here as well, which is very, very important. Like I said at the start of the video, I play on controller predominantly. That's where you guys see most of my gameplay. Uh, and of course, if you're on console, all of this applies to you as well. So first up, I play on tactical. I do use a scuff controller, so I've got paddles in the back here that really make that uh, incredibly optimal. I've got paddles for jump, I've got paddles for melee, for swapping weapons or putting on armor, and also for like reloading and everything. So I can do everything by pressing the paddles on the back of my controller. But tactical is going to allow me to drop shot with uh, with my thumbstick, and I feel like that is a, is a huge advantage to have. Just, uh, you know, sort of ups your movement game a little bit. So I play on tactical. Depending on your controller situation, some people like to play default on claw, or they go for something else uh, different. Dead zone, don't copy mine. Just going to throw it out there right now. Dead zone, I see this mistake all the time, is individual cases. Meaning my controller has a different dead zone than your controller, has a different dead zone than swags, than Joe's. It's different for every single player. That's something you have to test on your own to figure out how big your stick drift is, if you even have any at all. So that is completely personal. Uh, copying someone else's dead zone is really not going to help you if you have a, uh, a different variance in, in stick drift. So don't copy that. That's just what I have for my specific controller. As far as my sense goes, I play on an 1110. That's kind of on the higher end. I know most pros play on like anywhere between like a 5 and a 9, I think is what a Reddit uh, post said the other day. There was like a bunch of top tier, uh, you know, pro players for Warzone tourneys, and they were predominantly in between like five and nine for the most part. I play a bit higher just because I'm comfortable with that. Uh, my tip to sensitivity is start on a certain sense. Once you get comfortable with it, crank it up one in each area. I like to play the uh, the uh, not so even here where my horizontal is higher than my vertical because I feel like I'm controlling horizontal faster. Vertical needs to be a bit more precise for controlling recoil, so I have that slightly lower, but start on whatever sense you want to play on, get used to that, bump it up one. If you're not comfortable with that, go back down. If you can get comfortable with a new one, bump it up again until you're not comfortable. That way, you can really maximize your sensitivity there while still maintaining that level of comfort with your aim. Uh, for ADS, because I do play a bit higher, I like to be a bit more precise, so I play on a .73 and a .75, uh, and that's something I've just sort of gotten used to uh, throughout my time playing. Now, response curve, I've gone back and forth a lot. I like to stick to linear because I'm familiar with it, I'm comfortable with it, it's a one-to-one -one ratio, so what you're moving on your thumbstick is going to feel the exact same as what you're seeing in-game. Most pro players, though, play on dynamic, and I would suggest trying out both of these for a couple of days and seeing what your aim feels the best with, because 
Dynamic has its pros. Linear also has its pros. It's really all about what you feel the most comfortable with again. So while I can suggest linear, I can suggest dynamic. It really is going to come down to whether or not your aim feels stickier, feels more consistent on linear or feels stickier and more consistent on dynamic. Both of those though, I would say are better than standard. So try them out, see what you like there. Uh, vibration for me is a big no-no. I don't like to have my controller moving in my hands while I'm trying to keep a precise shot on. So that's not for me. Some players like the immersion. I've never really played with uh, vibration on. I'm just not a fan of it whatsoever. Uh, aim assist, I play on standard. Anything other than standard to me just feels very, very weird, especially how aim assist works in Warzone. As I'm sure you know, if you're a controller player, it breaks all the time. Anytime you're looking past a post or through a rail or up a staircase or whatever, aim assist just goes away. It stops working. It's very inconsistent in Warzone and has been since launch. It's a big problem. Um, but if you're playing on precision or focusing, it just feels really weird. You can sort of abuse these in certain cases, but they're not consistently broken or, you know, consistently in a way where you can abuse them and make them really, really strong. So I feel like standard is the uh, is the way to go there. I scale aim assist with FOV. It just feels better in my opinion. Um, my weapon mount activation is going to be ADS and melee. So that's just my, my paddle on the back. If I'm going to try and mount something, I can look in with my trigger, click my paddle, and then I'm mounted. It's, uh, it's a pretty smooth animation there. Um, aim down side behaviors hold, equipment behaviors hold. That's pretty standard stuff. User reload is contextual tap. This means I can run over a uh, weapon, just press square once or uh, I think X once on Xbox and pick it up right away. I don't have to hold it. This allows for easier looting, faster looting. Contextual tap is definitely a way to go in uh, in Warzone. Depleted ammo weapon switch, I don't have on. That'll throw me off. If I run out of ammo, I run out of ammo. I'd rather manually swap than have it swap for me. That'll mess me up in a fight. Uh, armor plate behavior I have is apply all. That way I can just press the button once and it's going to put on all the armor possible there. Makes things smoother and you can always get out of the armor animation by YYing or, uh, you know, canceling it otherwise. So despite it always going for that initial full plate motion, I can cancel out of it if need be. Now movement. This is an important category to pay attention to if you're trying to get better in Warzone. A huge thing with the Warzone skill gap is movement. You want to be uh, locking down your slide cancels, your jump slides, your corner peeking, uh, your shouldering, all sorts of stuff like this. Joe Woe is someone I watch a lot to try and get better movement off of. I try and learn from him because his movement is actually insane. Uh, Z Laner is another really good player who's got just cracked out movement. So the first big thing here is having tap to slide. It's just going to make it easier to string your slide cancels together. Auto move forward. Don't know why you'd have that on. Automatic sprint though, you always want auto attack sprint because if you can slide cancel well and slide cancel consistently, you're gonna be able to really maximize your movement speed because it'll uh, automatically force you into that attack sprint animation. So uh, those two combined, tap to slide and auto attack sprint are huge things to have on. Then finally here, you want parachute auto deploy. Uh, I have that as disabled. That way I can get really, really low to the ground and then I can manually deploy my chute. Yes, I died at fall damage all the time because of it. I'm basically Tim 2.0, uh, but it gives me that ability when I'm not being a bot and dying to fall damage to get lower to the ground into the loot faster than all my enemies who have auto deploy turned on, whereas they're getting force locked to pull their shoot at a certain elevation. So it just allows me to get into the action faster than a lot of other players. Now, the last thing I want to look at here is my color settings, because this is something I also get asked about all the time. And I'm going to say it straight out of the gate. I don't play with NVIDIA filters on. I'm going to show you guys some NVIDIA filters, but what I do when I make my videos is I play on the game as I just showed you guys with the settings that I use that we just went over. I don't add anything extra to my monitor. Of course, my monitor has its own default color settings that I've gone ahead and set up to look how I want them to look, but there is no NVIDIA filters. There's no OBS color correction. I play on just raw gameplay how the colors look by default in Warzone. When I'm editing my videos, though, I go ahead and I put on color correction. That way it looks way better for you guys than it does for me. It makes the videos look better. It ups the quality in my own opinion. So that's what I do to make my gameplay look better. And in my color correction, when I'm editing, I go for saturation to bring out the colors more. And I go for different brightness and different contrast to make the colors uh, both look better. And then things also pop better in dark areas. You guys can probably see rose skins better than I can in the videos, just because when I'm playing, things aren't uh, as highlighted in those dark areas. But that said, I have gone ahead. I've gone into my NVIDIA filters and I've built some filters that basically mimic what I add in color correction. So if you want to use some uh, some NVIDIA filters based off of what I do in my videos with my color correction, you can go ahead and do so. So we're in a private match here. I'm going to bounce over to the side here so that none of the bots shoot me. We're going to go into my NVIDIA filter settings here. Currently, I'm playing with off. And when I go into my styles one, I've got color and I've got brightness and contrast. Under color, I'm looking at a 20% tint. This can uh, you know be adjusted as you want. 0% intensity, zero temperature, and a vibrance of 22.6. I just cranked this to what I thought looked pretty good. You can mess around with that as well as uh, as needed. 
I wouldn't necessarily always say copy these one for one, but use them as a base and then just as needed. Then for brightness and contrast to go in, my exposure is at four because I don't want to wash out the game and make it too bright, especially with how broken the sun is right now. Sometimes you just can't see if you're looking that direction. Uh, contrast, I also have upped a little bit at 4%. Highlights, I have at 20%, then Shadows and Gamma is at 0%. So as we go in here, when I look at all of this, this is what it looks like now with uh, with my uh, color correction on or my NVIDIA filters on. If I go ahead and I turn it off, you can see it gets a bit more gray and things in like the dark corners here in the center where I'm looking. I just tried to point at my monitor instead of just moving my crosser over. Dark corners like that uh, don't stand out as much. I go back to turning them on. And as you guys can see, obviously the game physically looks a lot better. You can always crank up the vibrance more too if you wanted more saturation. And dark areas stand out a bit more as well. So if I go in here where it's obviously a lot darker, we have the dynamic lighting now in season three uh, with the new map. So the lighting will always look a bit better as you get more adjusted into an area. But like this isn't a super well lit area. There could be like a rose skin heading that if I'm up here. And if I go ahead and turn my filters off, it grays it out more. So a, a rose skin, which, you know, is predominantly gray in color is going to blend in a lot more to that background. But if I add some color to it, it's more green back there. Things stand out a little bit more. I could even go in and I could up the exposure more inside. Obviously, things are going to get a bit brighter. You don't want to go too bright, though, because then if we uh, if we were to run outside, even with the dynamic lighting on, you're going to see we are blinded out here by the gas and by the sun. So you don't want to have something too high for the brightness. I like it uh, being a bit lower, at like 4%, 5%. Uh, and you can do the same thing with contrast as well. But that's what I use for my uh, NVIDIA filters to sort of just balance out the uh, the color to sort of mimic what I do in my videos with my color correction. Like I said, though, using those as a base, I would suggest the most because everyone's playing on a different monitor. They want different lighting things. Maybe you want less color and uh, and more brightness and contrast. Maybe you want uh, more color, less brightness and contrast. Go ahead, throw in what I had there, and then uh, you know adjust as you need to make your game look the way you want it to. But yeah, with all of that being said, that is effectively what I use for all my settings here in Warzone. Uh, if this video helped you guys out or if you enjoyed it, let me know by dropping a like on it. And of course, if you're new to the channel or if you haven't already subscribed, I'm always covering everything going on in COD, news, intel, updates, loadouts, all sorts of stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, if you want to stay up to date with that, be sure to hit that sub button. Uh, once again, and as always, thanks so much for tuning in. And until next time, take it easy, have an awesome rest of your day, and I'll catch you guys later.